let me know, okay? Always reach out if you have questions. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to download this tool slide 3D exercise prototype drawing. And it wants to download somewhere. And I'm going to go to my 1405 directory and I'm going to place it in here. Notice it's already named tool slide 3D exercise. And I'm just going to take off the one one here because that's a, a replicated file. And I might just call it 3D. So now in AutoCAD, I'm going to open that up. So I could say open right here. I can also say control O or I can hit this open folder. So here's tool slide 3D. Now I'm going to get rid of this blocks, these um, palettes. And notice that we're in a 3D format already. So I want you to, to look at this. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to set my workspace to 3D. And right down here at the bottom of your screen is where we set up our 2D workspace. And we haven't changed it this whole time, so we need to remember where that is. But notice that there's a 3D modeling, 3D basics and 3D modeling. 3D modeling is what you want gives you a lot more options. Notice that all this has changed and my toolbars are gone. But don't worry because if you go back to 2D, we save those toolbars to be in that workspace. So I'm going to go back to 3D modeling here. And I want you to look at this view cube. Now you can orbit with your view cube. Notice that this is what I'm talking about in a three-sided corner. That's an isometric view. Likewise, I can click on this three-sided corner and look at how we're looking at this now. I could click on the bottom. So you can also left-click and drag this, and it orbits your view around. It pivots everything. So if you click on top, top is what our XY is drawn in. That's, that has been up there the whole time. And, you, and we haven't been using it. So I'm going to show you how to 3D rotate in a second. I'm going to drop this command prompt off my screen. And it's self-docked. So if we talk about breaking this part into pieces, you want to think about the profile of something. And you want to give it depth. If I extruded this bottom plate from the top with these here, these would be square. They don't know to be triangular in this view. They don't know to be triangular or angular in this view or this view, but it does in this view. A 3D chamfer in AutoCAD is really archaic. And so I would think that I would want to break this into this bottom slab and extrude it back this far then where what is the best profile of this top piece is it this is is this giving the entire what you want to think about is the entire shape what view is giving you the entire shape of that solid and then you just want to press the depth so this is giving me the entire shape of this solid and i want to press the depth this length this view right here is giving me an entire shape. If I created that from here, I have to go around and cut it. Then I have to cut this in. This would give me this entire shape in one view. I just need to push it. See, it's the same shape all the way back at step, all the way from here to here or here to here. And then these holes are already in their correct placement. So I'm going to subtract those or press pull them through my plate. So if we go to the view tab, it was talking about our views. Um, we could look at our different, we could go to our view cube. We're seeing our view cube here. This is how you turn things on and off. But if we go to the home tab, you can see that you have, um, you can make section planes. You can um, make your different visual styles right here. 
So that's the way that you want to work or the way that you want to print something. Here's my union, my subtraction, my intersection only is what I want to keep. And here's extrude. And those are the main ones that we're going to use. And we still have all of our, um, all of our part. We still have all of our drawing functionality. All right. So the main thing is setting your workspace. And now if we went to layers and where are layers here? Here are layers, and this is truncated down because I'm not in spread out like here. Notice that there's a color for 3D here. That's a layer that's already created for you. And this is the color that this part will be, no matter what color these lines are. When I extrude in a color with a layer that is of a color, when I extrude, it's going to be that color. All right. So... <clears throat> now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to divide these up. So one thing that I like to do, now once you use this with some things, I'm going to show you the difference in extrude and press pull. And I'm going to go to my home view. Do you see this home button right here? It doesn't show up until you hover up next to your view cube then you can click on home. And home right now is on the southwest isometric corner. But what if I wanted that to be the southeast isometric corner? You can go up and right click on the home view and we want this perspective with ortho faces. We don't want to have a perspective view such that the parts, let's just see how this works out. But I can say set current view as home right now and this is my home view and this is an isometric view so if i want to rotate something and this is very important everybody heads up on this one hold down your shift button and your middle mouse button your scroll button hold them down and then just move your mouse around that allows you to orbit do you notice that your center pivot point is right in the middle of your drawing so you can orbit above and below your sketching plane. Look anywhere you want. And I'm going to be like this. I'm going to just make it kind of weird here and go back and hit my home button. And it brings me right back to my isometric view angle. And this is the angle that you're going to print your drawing in. Okay. So I'm going to use this angle so that I can see my 3D depth. And I want to show you the difference right now in um, region and extrude. So if I say extrude, it will only extrude lines. And this just creates a skin and it has no depth. If I want to extrude this, I have to region it into a skin and pull that skin. So where is region? If you go to the modified, let me think about where this is. I think it's under the draw toolbar. It's kind of a weird place. This right here is region. So region converts an object into a region like a skin. So if I say region and I grab all of these lines and it has to be a complete boundary or it will be just those lines as a skin and I hit enter. Now you see it's a skin and it took on a certain color. It's its own object when I click on it. Now if I say extrude it, I can't make a cut of it because I have no material. But I can make it above or below my sketching plane. Does not matter. In 3D space, we stop worrying about our sketching plane or our XY plane. So I could just pull it up here and say 2.5 or whatever that is. And I'm just going to minimize this again and go back to our exercise right here. And I'm going to go back to my dimensions. 
So I'm just going to zoom in on this so that we can look at these dimensions and I'm going to try and pull it. Okay. So I'm just looking at the depth now. I've got this whole thing right here drawn. I've got that region. Now I would extrude it. Enter to say that's the only thing. Now you can extrude multiple things the same depth at the same time, but they all have to be the same depth. So if I press it away or pull it up, I'm going to press it away and I'm going to say three, enter, because that's my depth. Now if I grab this, there is a grip right in the middle. Or I can say M for move, and I can move from a specific place to another. Notice that it uses all your graphics. So you don't have that to use again if you mess up. So that being said, you see that first I had to say, under the draw drop down, I had to say region. REG is region. Then I have to select all that, and then I have to extrude and press it one way or another. It does get rid of my graphics. If I go back to my top view, one thing that I like to do in case I mess up is I just want to copy all this out here in space somewhere so that if I mess up, I have that to use again. But I'm going to get rid of that whenever I'm finished because when I extrude it, it gets rid of my graphics. That's why I did that. Another, another way to add material, you know, to just add the Z depth and not revolve. I'm going to show you revolve real quick. So let's say that I revolve all this. And it says specify the first endpoint. Now, notice I want to see if my object snaps are grabbing endpoints. So it's asking me to specify a plane, but it's not selecting my endpoints. So sometimes I have to go back and go to 2D on the top view to grab the endpoints that I want. So I grab that line and hit enter. And it wants a third one. So that's 3D mirror. Why did I get into that? REV is revolve. I'm going to grab all this. Specify the start axis. End axis. And now it's revolving that. And then that third point, I just clicked on the same point. So you can see that it revolved that in a circle. But if I go up here and I go to a 3D wireframe, it's not a solid. Do you see all this grid? You have to region something before you revolve it. And the reason that I'm showing you this is that in the mechanical 3D, you're going to have to revolve something. So you do have to region it sometimes. I'm going to region this. And I can select this selection filter like that, and it makes it a skin. And now if I say revolve it, and where is revolve right here? There it is. And I select this skin and hit enter. Now it says specify the axis, one, two, and then I'm just going to go ahead and select that angle of 360. Do you see 360 down here is in bird's mouth brackets. If that's what you want, hit enter. If you want it to be, 50, let's say, 45, it'll revolve at 45 degrees. And I'm going to go to my home view here, and you can see that now I have that revolved. And if I go back here and I go to 3D wireframe, now you can see the difference. That is one solid. If I grab it right here in the middle grip, that stretches it. Grab it right here. I'm changing. I can actually change 
my degree of rotation, let's say to 360. I grab it on the end. I can stretch. It's saying I can stretch it. You see it stretching. So it's actually stretching that point and made a hole in it, which is kind of weird. So this software is kind of strange the way that it acts. I'm going to go back. And I'm going to show you just another way to extrude this. So let's get right on point. I'm going to go to my home view. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press pull. This is press pull. And I use this almost all the time. If I had the interior and that's exterior boundaries of a wall, I could select on that and then just pull it up as far as I want. So if I select in this, I don't have to make a region. I'm just going to press it down because I want to show you something and I'm going to make that three units. So I'm now working, I'm not doing a demo. I'm actually working on what I'm going to be using. Three inches, enter. And escape. Now I'm going to grab this and there, and I'm going to say move it, M. And notice that it leaves my graphics. So you want to kind of, once you use a press pool, you kind of want to move things out of the way so that that red line isn't going to be over your 3D object. Now, if I wanted to use, I'm going to use press pull on this one. And this one is 2.25 inches. So I'm going to use press pull. And I'm going to select inside this boundary. And you're not selecting the lines. You're selecting the boundary. So I'm going to drag this one up or down 2.25 inches. And now I have two separate 3D objects. So I'm going to say M for move. And I'm going to move this over. You see that I still have graphics underneath there. So now I have two separate solids. And what I'm going to do is I want to lay them down so that they are sitting like this view right here. I want to lay both of them down. They both have to be laid down or turned around this angle. And I'm going to turn on my video. If you guys can see me, if you think about an axis and you're pushing it or laying it back around that axis. I'm at, I actually want to select an axis that I can set these parts up right. And one axis that I select on either one of these objects, I can 3D rotate them at the same time. So we're going to do that next. This is 3D rotate. So let's see what it says. 3D rotate. This is 3D move. So what's the difference in that? I just said move is move is move, but it may give you some 3D object snaps. So I'm going to use the 3D rotate and it says select the objects. I'm going to select this one and this one because I need to set them both upright. And I'm going to hit enter to finish my command. Now I've got this big orb. And notice that I have my X, Y, and Z axes here. If I were going to flip these up so that it's looking like this, and I select, and I want to see this face right here, down here, what axis am I going to flip it around this? Is this going to be my hinge point? Then it's going to flip this way. If I flip it around this axis, it's going to turn upright. And then if I flip it around the z-axis, it's going to spin around like you have a vertical axis right here. So horizontal axis will lay us down. I'm going to select, and it doesn't matter which one of these you use. I could select this right here to be my base point. It says specify the base point of this orbit. So I'm going to click right here. Now, as you hover over these and notice, I want you to notice your X, Y, and Z here. If you hover over the red, it turns to gold. That means that that's the one you're selecting. Do you see the red axis there as the hinge and the blue 
it will spin around. And then the green, it's going to flip back and forth toward me or away from me. So I want it to kind of, I want it to flip around this one. I want to set these up along that bottom axis as if that's laying on the floor and I want to pivot it around that edge. So I'm going to click on that gold orbit. Right now, it says select a start point. Right now, I need to be in ortho mode. F8 is ortho. So notice that it, it clicks every 90 degrees. So if I put my hand behind this part, and it doesn't matter what you where you click. So I'm going to click right here. And then I just push it upwards to set them up right and click again. I don't have to say 90 degrees, 270 degrees, 35 degrees. I don't have to think about my angles if I have ortho on because usually I'm rotating in 90 degree increments because these views are in 90 degree angles to each other. Then we flip our views 90 degrees. So now I need to rotate this one around. So if I'm rotating, I want to rotate maybe around this front edge and rotate it around so that it looks like this. So I'm going to use 3D Rotate again. I'm going to hit Enter to repeat the last command and select this one. And that's all I want to rotate. This one is in the correct orientation. And I'm going to hit Enter. Now I'm going to select a base point like maybe right here. Because it's along an edge, I like to think about edges as being hinges. So I'm going to select right here at the bottom or the top of the edge. It doesn't matter. And if I want it to spin around, would it be spinning around toward me with this? It would flip again in the same manner. This would spin it toward me. So I'm going to select that. That's going right through that edge that I want it to add it to use as a hinge. So I'm going to select on that gold orbit and I'm going to click anywhere. It doesn't matter which direction and then push it 90 degrees and click again. So these are above each other and I want to show you. You see that they're on different planes. Do you see that we are in a perspective view? We're not seeing things in the correct orientation front right top. So I'm going to I'm going to right click on this home and say perspective with orthogonal faces. That means 90 degrees to each other. And now that's correct. So when we went up and made our our home view. This when we right click and set that current view as home, go to perspective with ortho faces. Because that's going to put our front right and top view in flat perspective orthogonal perspective. Now, where is this located? Um, I don't want to have to figure out where two inches is from this corner. But do you remember that two plus 2.25 subtracted, that's 4.25, right? Subtracted from six leaves me two on this end. So I know that this is directly centered. So I'm going to grab this and I don't have to say 3D move. I can just say move M. And I want to snap to the midpoint. Now, this is doing some really funky stuff on me. There's a midpoint. I had to zoom in for it to find it. The midpoint of that bottom edge, I'm going to move it, and I'm going to take off ortho with F8 to the midpoint of that top edge. And it looked like it was huge, but it was up closer to us than that bottom plate. So it went all the way down to that bottom plate. Now, if I click on this and this, they're two separate things. You see that? So I want to weld these together. And I'm going to click on them first, and I'm going to show you how this works, and say Union. Now it asks me to select them. So you want to remember that sometimes you have to pre-select what you're going to do. You can't select the objects first, in other words. So I'm going to select these two and hit enter. And now that's all one unit. And that's my isometric view.
Now I need these holes and they're placed correctly in this view, but I need them on this 3D model. So where could I move them relative to any of this geometry? I can move it from this point, but that is down lower on this plane. I can move it from this endpoint, which is on the top of the plane. So I have that same point. I have the midpoint of this entire edge, which is the midpoint that we moved this to. So I'm going to grab these two and you can copy them or move them. So I'm just going to say CO for copy from, and I'm going to grab the midpoint of that top edge, not the bottom edge. And I'm going to zoom in here and I want you guys to see that midpoint show up. Remember that this is above where my 3D object is. So I'm going to click on that and it snapped it right down to that plane. So I'm going to hit escape now and I cop mistakenly copied another set, but I'm going to rotate around. I'm going to use shift and holding down my middle mouse button. Now I can rotate this around without having to go to the view cube to orbit. Now you see that I have both of these circles and I could press, I could extrude them both at the same time, but I'm going to show you how to use press pull on this one. I want to use press pull and I want to subtract material. So here's press pull and I'm going to select inside this boundary of this circle, drag it way beyond. So imagine this being a drill bit. You want to drill through the depth of your material. It doesn't matter how far it is. And then just click. You don't even have to say how far that is. So I clicked in the boundary. I drug it down and I clicked again. If I go to this three-sided corner over here, it's going to turn to the southwest isometric view. And I'm going to use press pull again and select in this boundary and drag it down. And now I've got a hole and I want to show you this hole. So I'm going to hit escape to get out of that command, these two holes, and notice that it's all one part. If I drag this around, you can see that I have voids in there, but you see the red lines on top? I want to move this to get away from those red circles Sorry, the red circles that I use for the holes. So if I go back to the top view, I'm looking straight at the top. That is the same view as that. If I go, you want to look at the right hand view, you can click on this right arrow. There's your right hand view. What about um, the front view? There's your front view. So see how this just rotates around? And then this rotates in this way. There's the back. So if I get to the top and I'm upside down, you have these arrows right here to ro rotate you in the same orientation. So now here's my top upright using these rotate this rotates your view in whatever orientation that you're in, counterclockwise or clockwise. Now, if I hit my home button, I, I will have an isometric view. But the first thing I'm going to do is take all this out. And I, now I'm going to go to my isometric view. If you double click your middle mouse button, it zooms to fit. And that's our part. Now in my view style, shaded with edges, I think it's pretty good. You, you can see the edges show up. If you go to, let's say conceptual, you see some edges too. And I think seeing edges on this sometimes see, and here's shaded, you can go to sketchy, which is kind of cool, but we're gonna make it look solid. Right, so maybe I do shaded, maybe I do um, some, you know, conceptual, or maybe I do shaded with edges. So I'm going to go to this PowerPoint here, and I want to see if it tells you, so it shows you some different ways. So we created both of these, we moved this, 
And then um, it has you union those things together. And it might tell you to press pull or extrude these through by using a subtraction method. And uh, I might show you that. But I think press pull, press pull is a lot easier than subtracting because you have to union it and then subtract. This is the way it wants to look. And it says, uh, left click the 3D view tab in the left corner of the graphics area. Edit the text box by double clicking. Okay, this is here. Conceptual view style is what it tells us to use. And so we're going to go to that conceptual. And now we're finished with this one. I'm going to save this. This is just how easy it is. And I'm going to go to layout. Now, where is my model in here? This is something that we have to learn about a little bit. So I'm in paper space right now. And my model is not, I want to show you this. Let's see if we have the layer of model space. If I go to this, I don't have a model space layer. This is something that everybody messes up on. But I have my crosshairs going all the way across my paper. That shows me that I am in paper space. And that's where we edit our text. So I'm going to make this tool slide 3D in all caps. And then for the scale, I have to figure that out, but I can do these other things. Remember to change this to your initials or your name, whatever you put in your template. And this is sheet one of one. Now there may be an exercise where you pull these all together but I'm just going to let you guys make these all separate drawings if you want to. Today is 11, 8, 21. And now we're going to figure out the scale. So we don't have to have the as me note and all that stuff because we don't have dimensions on this for it to govern. And we don't have to have a material. We're essentially looking for the 3D parts in this one. All right. Um, so I am um, edit the text blocks by double clicking. And now what we're going to do is we're going to try and find our part, but I can't do it while I'm looking at my paper border. This is my frame that's looking inside my object. So if I click on this frame right here and hit the down button, notice that there is no scale that's set. So what I want to do is go to paper and now I'm inside that picture frame looking inside model space and if I double click my middle mouse button it zooms to fit. So I found my part otherwise you can zoom around you can pan around until you find it. But if you double click your middle mouse button while you're in model space right here very important then you can find out what that is. Now we're going to learn how to set the scale of our part in our drawing. And you're going to have to know this for architectural. You're going to have to know this for your mechanical final, for your 3D stuff. So pay attention to this. While I'm here, I've got this view. But if you look down here, this is the scale of the part in this box. It is scaled up 1.334 times. If I want this to be one-to-one, -one, I click on it, that's 100%. So maybe I want to leave it there. Now, if I zoom in and out, you see my scale changing. You don't want to do that. You want to set this scale. It could be one-half. So see how it's zooming in and out to scale it to whatever is a true scale. So I'm going to go to one-to-one. -to -one. Some of them you may have to make one half. Whatever you scale this to right here, 
you can pan back and forth to set it the, in the place that you want. However, zooming in and out with your scroll button will change this. Once I get this set where I want it to be, this button right here allows me to lock my viewport. Let's lock it. Now, if I pan around, I'm moving my screen. If I zoom in and out, I'm moving my whole piece of paper. So I've got it at in my model at one-to-one -one scale, and it's locked. And I'm going to go back to paper here, and I'm ready to print. So I'm going to save this one, and we're going to look at our, at our directions in Blackboard. But I'm going to go ahead and save this one. It's finished. And I'm going to go to the next one and see if I can get that one done. And we'll finish the next two. You can finish them on your own if you want to, or watch the videos, follow the book. Or you can wait until next time because I am going to show you every one of these. The next one is the bracket. So what I'm going to do is go, I'm going to start another video real quick.